Hey, and welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time, welcome. Hope you enjoy your stay and you learn a little bit today. This is going to be the first video in the hacking series that I started last week. Today we're going to be going over in-map, basics of how to use it, some of the switches in it, and then I'm going to list out the switches that I use, specifically on CTF boxes, and then give you guys a little bit of a intro to the in-map scripts, and I also have a cheat sheet to share with you. Links to everything will be down in the description. So let's go ho hop over into my home lab and we'll get started. Real quick before we get started, I just want to remind you to subscribe, like, comment, and share. We are currently at 94 channel members. We're almost at 100, which I have never expected to hit, but it's cool that we're this close. So if you're enjoying my content and you haven't subscribed yet, please go down, hit that subscribe button, share it out, see if we can get a few more people and see if we can get over that 100. Okay, so here we are in my home lab. I've got the these machines set up behind a PFSense router on my Proxmox server. And as of right now, these are the only two machines, the Kali and the Metasploitable 2 box that we'll be attacking. So the basic usage of nmap is going to be nmap. And yeah, you'll see some information. I was going through a few things here. And then the IP or website. And since these are so close on local net, the scans will be pretty quick. And if you don't know what Metasploitable 2 is, it is an image you can download that has all these services on it that are exploitable, so you can use it for practice and things like that. There is a Metasploitable 3. Um, I do plan on getting that installed too after I finish getting the rest of the home web set up. So here you can see we have a list of different ports. Of course, we got some we recognize, FTP, SSH, Telnet, Simple Mail, Transfer, DNS, HTTP, and a bunch of others down through here. So what are some of the switches that... I think would be the best ones for you to learn. Well, if you look in the help menu, the dash H, you see there is a lot of options down through here. And I highly recommend that you take time to go through these, learn a little bit. The cheat sheet that I'm gonna share with you will help with this. But all in all, there are eight that I recommend. Now, it says, that sounds like a lot, but once I show you how to use them, it'll make a lot more sense. First one, and I use this every time I start a new CTF, is the dash F. Now dash F is going to be basically fast scan mode. Basically it'll search the top 100 ports, I think it is, and print them out. So if you're doing anything over the VPN or anything like that, or if you are in the phase where you're wanting to do bug bounties, this will help speed up your process a little bit. So normally what I'll do is after I scan a machine and I find some open ports, so like say we've got the FTP and the SSH here, ports 22 and 21, then I will switch over and use the SV because I want to know about the versions of the software and SC because I want it to run the basic default script for vulnerability. So it tries to find a few things. And we're going to do port 21, port 22, Give it just a second. Alrighty. And this is going to be a bit more information than what you would have because I've got a, another script installed that I'm going to show you here in a little bit as this Volner script. So as you can see here, we got FTP, shows us what version is, 2.3.4. And this right here, that's going to be our IP address. It gives you a little bit of information about the FTP service. And then down here, you got SSH, shows you the version there. Script, one of the extra scripts I've installed allows you to automate scanning for vulnerabilities. So see, we've got some here, a GitHub exploits, and we got some that are actually give us the CVE numbers. This number here is a CVSS score, so a 9.8 and a 10, which are high vulnerabilities. And you can actually set this to where it doesn't show anything below a certain number. And as you can see, the uh, SSH port on this thing has quite a bit that the script thinks it's vulnerable to. Here we got some host key information, and then it's believing that it's running a Linux system, which indeed it is. So that's the SVSC option. And also threw in the dash P there, that's for ports. So if you know there are certain ports you want to scan, you can just number them like how I did. However, if you want to scan all available ports, which sometimes is useful, the dash P dash will tell it to scan all ports. Okay, the next thing is the T switch. Now, you saw how fast the scans were going when I just ran them, since we're local. And that's at a T3 speed. 
which is going to be your normal speed. But let's say that you are trying to evade firewall or evade detection. Basically, you need to slow your scanning down. Well, then you can use a 2, a 1, or even a 0 on this, and that'll really, really slow things down. But just for demonstration, I'll set this to 2. I'll put in our IP address here. And you can see right off the bat, is taking longer than the first scan we did. And again, doing these slower ones will help you evade firewalls, IDS, and stuff like that. There are a few challenges in Try Hack Me. Um, I know one particular box off the top of my head, even though I can't remember the name off of it, and I can't recall, I think Hack the Box has a couple of boxes as well, where the goal is not only to capture the flags, but also to not raise an alarm when you're attacking the machine. So this method of doing a slower port scan is definitely going to help you achieve that goal. Okay, and just a final note on that dash T option. You can actually go up to 5. So the range on it is 0 through 5, just to let you know. Okay, so for the last, the first of the last two switches is going to be the dash PN. And there's not really anything I can do to run to show you what it does. Basically what it does is tell Nmap to skip the host detection process. So the actual first scan I will do on a box is something like this. So I'll do the fast scan to find ports real quick and I'll tell it to skip the host discovery. As you can see, it's super quick. And the last switch before we get to the scripts is going to be the dash SU switch. Now what this does is run a UDP scan. And Nmap normally runs scans as TCP. If you notice that all the ports came up at showing TCP and that they were open. So we run an SU scan. Actually, let's go ahead and set our other options here. Okay, this is a good example. You see here, it requires root privileges to run a UDP scan. And you're gonna have that from time to time with some of the options. Okay, so here you can see our UDP scan got done and took 129 seconds, so it does take a bit longer to do, so do keep that in mind. As you can see here, we do pretty much have the ports we expected, and we do have some UDP options. Some are open, some are open filtered. So this is really helpful because sometimes you'll run across machines that the TCP port has been blocked or it's been silent, so you won't see it on a scan, but if you flip over into a UDP, you'll see the port. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Hey, editing Gandorf here. I realize I did not explain to you what it is I do with these when it comes to a CTF. The first thing that I run is going to be nmap-f-pn target. This is so I can get a quick look, see what common ports are up, and I can go ahead and make a list of things. And then I'll take the ports I find from there, and then I'll run it through Nmap again with the SVSC option specifying just the ports I want to look at. And then sometimes what I'll do, depending on what level box it is, if it's like a medium or hard, I won't normally do this for easies, but medium and hard sometimes I will. I'll set up a separate terminal to run a dash P dash to scan the rest of the machine to see if there is anything else I need to look for. Okay, so on to scripts now. Now first off real quick, your scripts are going to be stored in your user share in map scripts directory like I've got listed here. We do an ls on that and then we pipe it out to word count and dash l to get the total number. You see in mine I've got 606 right now and the nice thing is is that say you do a scan you find a port and you want to see what options you have for scripts you can actually do this ls grep it and search for your port so let's say ssh right and this will give you a list of scripts that are made to run on SSH. So that's great, but how do we use them? Do nmap script equals SSH host key. We'll just do this one for an example right now. And just to help it, we'll just go ahead and set it to port 22, which I think it does by default in this script. We'll run it. And then right here, you can see we get the host keys out. Now what scripts are really great for is that they add functionality into Nmap. They can actually be used to make it a vulnerability scanner as you saw with one of the scripts I have called Vulner. So take the time to kind of look through, familiarize yourself with some of the scripts. And there are actually a lot of scripts out there the community has made. And maybe even look into doing some of your own. If these scripts are written in the Lua language, which I am actually going to start looking into 
learning because of this. So if we take, say like this SSH host key script here, I'll just copy it. So you see, there's some of the required options up here. And I'll leave a link down in the description to an episode from Paul Security Weekly where they actually have a segment that goes over getting into NMAT scripts. And the gentleman in that video does a really good job of breaking all this down, explaining it, and showing you what you need to know to just hop in and start doing it. But as you can see here, we got a comment section that talks about what the script does. Then down here we've got, I believe, the arguments. Yeah. As you can go through, this is the actual code body of the thing. And the double dash, if I remember correctly, is comment. So this is should be all commented out. There we go. There's the actual code. But yeah, so you can see this is what it looks like inside. Like I said, you go watch his video. He gives you more explanation into learning a little bit about the Lua language and how these scripts work. As for myself, I'm definitely going to be taking a dive into this. And then finally, the best switch out of all of them is something that you definitely want to learn, especially when you start doing bug bounties or you're trying to hit multiple boxes and stuff like that, is going to be the output command. Okay, so real quick, if we just do the nmap-h, we'll see that toward the end there's this output section. So you have this dash little o and then your option. What this does will save your scan results into a file for you, so the dash or the n is just a normal format basically taking what you see on the screen throwing it into the text file you can choose to save it as an xml you can choose to save it into script kitty language which for whatever reason you can uh, choose to save it in a greppable format so that way you can save the file and then you can just use the grep the cat file name and then pipe it to grep and look for certain things there that makes it a little bit easier and the option of the o capital a which does it in three major formats at once, which if I'm not mistaken, does normal, XML, and grep. And then just a couple of little things here, like it says, this dash V for verbosity. You can do double V, so you can get a lot of information about what NMAP uh, is actually doing on the back end. And just in case you come across a situation where you need to run IV IPv6 scans, you can just use the dash six. Okay, so I'm going to leave a description down below to these two GitHubs here that we're going to look at. This is nmap vulners, which you've already seen in my output. Basically, this file right here is what it was running. You can read the readme here to get some more insight. Basically, all I did was come up here, copy paste the code, come to the terminal. I have a folder called git, so that way anytime I try to I pull stuff down like this, I can have it all collected into one space. As you can see, you've already got it here. Basically, you can just go in and then copy the script over to that user share directory. Make sure you use the sudo command. And then once you've got it over there, you'll need to run sudo nmap script update db. And I spell script wrong. There we go. As you can see here, it's updating as it says update is successful. So the other script, and I'm gonna actually walk through installing this one's called volmscan. Now this one does a better job, from my understanding, because I've only seen a couple of people use it, about actually hunting for vulnerabilities. And I'm very interested in starting to use this one myself. So real quick, just to show you down here in the installation, it actually says to make a folder for VulnScan. So basically when you call the script, like down here, you'll have to type VulnScan for the name of the folder, slash VulnScan for your script. So let's go here, copy this, Come to our terminal, git clone, paste that in, let it run. As you can see here, we've got this new folder called VulnScan. So we're going to do a sudo copy dash lowercase r, I believe it is. There we go. So now if we do it ls that, and we just type in vuln. Yeah, there we go. So you see that vulners script that I was talking about earlier and then vuln scan folder that we just copied over there and everything inside of it. Okay, so we're going to try it out real quick. So we'll do nmap and this does require the SB option so we can get the version information. We'll do the dash dash script equals vuln scan forward slash vuln scan. We're just going to tell it to do port 80 here. I think I've got an extra white space there. Yeah. And then our target. And let's run this, see what we get. Alrighty. Oh, wow. Wow, that actually came back with a lot of information. Good night, look at all this. Okay, so there we can see we got our Apache 2.2.8. 
And Volum Database looks like I found something. Cross-site scripting and a memory leak. It does search MITRE, so we got a bunch of CVEs here. Okay, so then security focus, we got a couple of things here. IBM X-Force. Exploit Database. This is kind of the big one. It's one of my favorites to kind of look through and see what it can find. So yeah, as you can see, well, we even got a remote command injection right there. We got a couple of them. So as you can see, these extra scripts can be super useful in your CTFs, and especially when you get into bug bounties and moving forward into red teaming or stuff like that. Alrighty, so that will be it for our Nmap video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned some things from it. If you did, please give a subscribe, like, and a comment down below. And please don't forget to share. Let's try to get this out there to a lot of people, see who's interested in joining us on this adventure, see if we can't get to 100. I really appreciate you stopping by and watching through to the end of the video. Look forward to seeing you next week. Have a good day.